Hi, I'm uh, Simon. I'm the web team lead over at Campus M or Mobile Campus Solutions at Ex Libris. Um, I co um, developed the AEK2 system um, and I'm pretty much the one who, who does the demoing and, and, and stuff like that. Um, we're just going to run through some slides which is just going to talk about um, not only um, kind of the frameworks that we use within AEK2. Um, but also um, the approaches we have and all the and some of the legacy stuff as well which we've had um, like AK1 um, and just kind of give you a bit of a background on the whole system so you can see where it came from and how it's developed on um, in the last couple of years. The slides is the first part of it and then we will be getting on to a demo um, which is, is nicknamed the weather demo and this will just be um, working with a open API um, consuming the data and then showing that in an AEK screen and I'll walk you through that by giving you an example on my screen on how that works and how we create that. So what is the AEK which is one of the number one questions we get um, and it's called, it's nicknamed AK, but it actually stands for the Application Extension Kit. And what this allows us to do is, and also for you to do as well, is to have a technique of being able to produce um, content across all of your platforms in a web view. Um, so if you were doing it in this traditional sense of creating an app, you would obviously have to learn Swift code, and you'd also have to learn Java um, for Android and iOS. And also you'd also have to be a bit techy on the web as well. Um, to create um, a system and obviously you'd have three areas where you'd have to update um, with the AEK because obviously this system works within the web view of the apps um, it allows us to use kind of these web technologies um, and create this framework which allows us to not only show information which the customer wants um, but also provide um, kind of links into that Campus M platform and we'll be discussing a little bits and pieces about those a, a bit later on. Uh, like I say, it's, it's kind of a, a web-based environment, so obviously um, for the AEK2 platform we kind of develop on our local machines, uh, we kind of work in that environment, we proxy with the, um, the, the servers um, and then once we're ready to deploy we will deploy that up and then obviously that will move on to a, either a, a dev environment or a production environment. So everything kind of works within uh, developing and testing on your local machine and then moving across to the application um, areas and, and, to, and managing those via App Manager. Okay we'll just have a quick um, go over App Manager then. So if I click on to App Manager it's going to log me in and I can just type in my username and password which obviously will be beautifully provided by us here for you. Um, and this is kind of the home page area of App Manager and uh, there's obviously a lot of different functions and features on here. Um, there's obviously the App Builder which allows us to go and create tiles and kind of position those and have actions on those tiles which go out to external websites um, or we can kind of um, move tiles and play around with those and we'll be doing that a little bit later on. Um, there's obviously your app settings which obviously gives you kind of general information and also within here as well you can kind of create your pocket guide content uh, which is kind of just standard HTML and CSS which gives you just kind of static information which you can pass on to them so maybe that would be a list of uh, opening times for a library or kind of information that won't change, uh, contact numbers, essential information and stuff like that. Um, you can also in here as well create users and get other bits and pieces. Um, obviously you've got kind of your asset manager which allows you to upload images, CSS files, um, kind of any asset that you want to either use within um, App Builder where you're creating tiles, maybe icons um, or background images and so on and so forth, um, or CSS files which you want to use in your pocket guide information. Um, the main area which obviously we're going to be focusing on today is the AEK area. And the AEK area um, still harbors most of the AEK1 platform and structure, uh, but we're going to be kind of ignoring that because we're going to be moving into AEK2 straight away. Obviously, AEK1 is literally there for our legacy customers, uh, people who are still within the transition stages of moving not only from um, AEK1 into AEK2, but also still need to have a bit of support with AEK1 as well. Um, so the two main areas we'll be focusing on is the menu options which is obviously an area where you create a tile which then sits on the home screen 
of the app which you then click on and then produces the AEK screen for you as well as also our screens area which allows us to manage um, the screens that are available we can preview these in this environment and we can also kind of um, delete them and and set roles and profiles and stuff like that for them as well so we will we'll be working on those two areas um, for you um, but yeah that's kind of the the app manager just a quick quick look over and kind of the areas we'll be focusing on in within the AEK training session. So like I say, there was an AEK1 version and it, it does still reside in um, the uh, web version, the app manager area. And obviously if I click on add a AEK screen, this is where the old legacy code sits. And this information here is, um, is kind of populated in, in one, one screen and obviously you have to then obviously add HTML and some predefined classes or a style sheet up at the top. And this could be then previewed um, just in situ like this. Um, you'll probably just ask me to log in just very quickly. And it probably won't allow me, unfortunately. Let's just get out of that for a second. Let's just uh, log in properly. Beautiful. Let's move this forwards. There we go. So that's logged me in there. Let's just double check that that's logged in on Safari as well. Because I know they like to share cookies sometimes. No, they don't. Not today. So if I click preview here, because I've also logged into my CU dev, um, then you can see here this is the information. And I can kind of change this around if I wanted to. I can um, add some additional information into here and hit the preview button. And then obviously that information is going to change. And this is the AK1 platform. So I'm not going to focus too much on that, but that's kind of how a screen was once was once created with AK. You would do it website um, in this kind of window area. And you'd be doing previewing and once you were happy with it you would save it and then add it to a, a menu option in that sense um, and there was obviously a lot of advantages of that because it was kind of um, a very simple way of achieving things you could um, create some very simplistic screens with very minimal technical knowledge um, and kind of create something that looked reasonably okay in, in a very fast time um, because it was on the web um, the interface itself was very portable. Um, you didn't have a prerequisite of setting things up and get stuff going. Uh, changes could have been made very quickly, just like I showed you there, and obviously shared easily as well. Because it was on the web, you could say, just log into here and go to this tile and change that information if you require to. But there was also a lot of disadvantages of it. Um, the AK1 itself is about five years old now, uh, which in web terms is, is quite old, uh, almost dinosaur-like. Um, so obviously we wanted to update it. Um, it uses what we call server-side rendering. So instead of using the mobile device, the iPad or the browser to kind of take the information and render kind of the HTML and the CSS, um, a server was actually in place. So it would go away to the server, request the AEK screen. It would then return the HTML and the CSS all pre-rendered pretty much and then just display that on front of you. Uh, and the reason for this is obviously because back five years ago, mobile phones weren't as um, you know technically advanced as they were now. Um, and obviously there's a lot more grunt within uh, inside of an iPhone and an Android device. Um, so we, we really want to kind of make sure that that is you know, where we're kind of hitting for it. Uh, there was a poor offline experience because obviously everything was working within a server. Um, if you weren't going away and if you hadn't already pre-fetched the information, it would just kind of tell you that it was offline and that was it. And there was no kind of information to let the user know that they might be in a bad Wi-Fi zone or they're offline at this current time or even show cached information for them um, pretty ahead of time. Because it was on the web as well and it started off as a very small thing, there was kind of a, a limited functionality scope so we couldn't kind of tap into resources on the mobile device like a location picker or a photo picker which we've got now within AEK2. Uh, there was a poor end user experience as well because obviously the UE and the UX was designed about five years ago. 
it was quite um, in modern day standards it's quite clunky now and it's a bit kind of um, in that sense of a bit kind of needs updating and needs a bit more polish to it um, and as you can see when I was working with it it was a single code page and that makes maintaining the complex screens that were, that were being generated by our customers very difficult to, to manage and, and maintain and one of the other things we found as well was because obviously our users were kind of having three or four people in a development team um, what would sometimes happen is someone might go into a page and accidentally delete something and hit save and leave um, and then a poor developer later on down the line would be tearing their hair out and wondering why their screen wasn't working when they didn't touch it um, and later on they found that oh someone had removed something or tried to add something and it hadn't worked um, so there was no kind of versioning or a way of kind of seeing who was editing what so um, we kind of put our heads together and we wanted to create uh, a new system we wanted it um, by developers for developers um, and something that we would obviously actively be using as well as obviously um, our customers as well so we wanted to try and get some benefits for us as well so AK itself launched, um, this is about a year ago, it's about a year and a half now, um, and it's been really, really successful. Um, it's still very much in its infancy, um, and it's still being very actively developed on um, every day. And obviously, because we're using it internally as well as you, um, we're obviously adding new features, we're adding new tweaks and, and changes to it as, as it moves on. So it's kind of a living, growing project. Um, there's a lot of AEK2 screens already in production. Um, there's obviously a lot of customers which have switched over um, and they've obviously wanted to use some of the new techniques and new styling that we've kind of brought in. Um, and like I say, all the tools which you see here and which I'll demonstrate for you today are not only um, used by us, Campus M, but it's also used among our customers. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. You guys are not getting um, anything less than what we are. And unfortunately, there is no magic button to create an AEK screen. I wish there was. It would save me a lot of time um, and obviously a lot of uh, headaches as well. Um, so the AEK2 goals, which we had when we kind of started it, was obviously to provide a, a more kind of persistent sophisticated development environment which I could get that word right um, and this meant that we wanted something which was a bit more mature not on the web not um, confined to kind of just one screen we wanted something which we could kind of expand and grow into we wanted to kind of promote more of the client-side processing because now iPhones and Android devices have got quad-core processors and you know four giga RAM in them but you know they're almost like mini PCs back in my day um, you know it's really useful to try and have something there and kind of use all of that power and take advantage of that for obviously the client as well as also for kind of anything that we're doing um, and obviously there's new features as well um, which kind of brings us closer to the native client so again like I've said about the photo picker um, you can click a button on an AEK page it will ask the user if um, if we can access their photos it will then go into the camera mode. Uh, the user could take a photo or they can pre-select a photo from their library. And then once they click OK, that information is sent back into the AEK screen um, to do what you want with. You could send it off to a server, you could email it to someone, you could use it as their profile picture across um, AEK environments and stuff like that. Really anything that you wanted to do with it um, and kind of having that flexibility with it. Like I say, we've tried to make it very modular in appearance, um, and that's to allow kind of greatest flexibility. It means that we can update specific areas, um, as well as also, you know, we know our customers are not all the same. We want, we know you guys are a bit different and different in the way that you guys work as well. So we wanted to make sure it was flexible enough that you guys can either tie it into what you currently do, or you can kind of uh, micromanage what you want to kind of take out and use within that situation. And like I said, we're trying to update ourselves to all of the kind of the latest industry tools and, and kind of the techniques that are available. Um, so, for example, we're now kind of using eSummer 6. If you're a JavaScript developer, you'll instantly know what I mean there. Um, and we're kind of using kind of the, the new way of thinking within web and responsive designs. Um, and the, one of the last things that we've got is obviously we've got a great open source JavaScript community. Um, and that really allows us to kind of tap into that 
and use kind of um, code from third parties and bring that in and, and save us from developing our own systems, which is fantastic if you want to get something up and running very, very quickly. Um, and we also like to have um, promotion and co collaboration between our customers. So um, later on, you'll see that we have something called the registry, which allows you to upload your code. Um, and obviously you can set the permissions based upon who can see that code. Um, and obviously we would love it if our, our customer base um, would work with each other and, and share information and pop along to user groups and say hi and, and work together on some really amazing AEK projects. Um, we know sometimes it's not always the case, but uh, yeah, end, end goals for us basically. So yeah, so the advantages we've got We'll see, like I say, new features and, and new and native integrations, uh, a better offline experience for the user, um, a more up-to-date look and feel, which obviously makes things look a bit more um, classy, up-to-date, shiny, new, everyone loves those kind of words. Um, developers are obviously free to develop in, in your environment, so by this I mean I edit in Atom, um, I, I do code editing in Atom, you might use Sublime, um, you might use um, Notepad++, um, you might use uh, Visual Basic. Um, whichever kind of editing platform you are familiar with and you're comfortable with, you can kind of use that. And also if there's any kind of workflow tools that you guys use as well about automation of, of deployments and so on and so forth, that can be added as well. Like I said, there's a huge resource um, of the open source modules. Um, this comes from um, NPM which we will discuss in a bit later on. Um, and obviously you can kind of get an idea of how that works and, and works for you. And like we say, because uh, I think again is modular, you can kind of pick and choose what you want to use. Uh, most customers so far, Touchwood, are working with the whole stack and, and kind of love the whole stack and how everything works. But you can kind of uh, remove bits and pieces if you, if you so wish to try and um, maybe if it's a more sim simplistic screen and you don't need all the technology, you can kind of remove things and chop and change between so you can kind of um, do what you like with it in a sense.